Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together for worship today. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you who have come and gathered together here in the sanctuary, as the, well as those of you who are joining us online as we create this unique and wonderful community of faith, gathers to lift our hearts and minds and voices in praise to God this morning. I do hope that if you are here in the sanctuary, that you might take time to sign the friendship pads that are found in the pews. If you're online, find that, contact us, that you might also let us know that you're here today. If you're here in the sanctuary, do those pads out, pass them down to those who are seated with you, and then as they've been filled out, pass them back, that you might have opportunity to get to know perhaps someone sitting beside you that, uh, that you might not have known as well before. A special word of welcome to guests and visitors with us this morning. It is always a joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. As you fill those friendship pads out, that you'll include your name and address, maybe email, phone number, some other way that we might be in touch with you in this week is ahead. And if you are looking for a church home, I do hope that we'll find unity to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you could speak with me or speak to someone sitting near you following the service that we might also follow up on that request. We continue in yellow safety protocols uh, here at Unity uh, based on our community transmission levels. And you'll see every other few on the side sections are, are marked off. Uh, just encourage us to continue to work to be as safe as possible as we gather together to worship God. We are in the middle of July, and that is change for the church for us, which means that you'll see we're not wearing our robes and things, and it's a little more relaxed in terms of our dress um, here in worship. It's also our opportunity to receive uh, both pocket change and other donations toward our two significant um, summer offerings, uh, both to support children who find themselves in need, one here in Fort Mill through communities and schools, and the other through... Uh, uh, work with a synod in Syria to provide uh, care and aid for, uh, for children who find themselves in the refugee camps there. So I encourage you to be a part of that special offering in addition to our more casual dress throughout the month of July. This morning, following the service, please come to the Fellow Hall. We've got our um, special intergenerational activity morning today, focused on our neighbors near and far. Uh, this is a part of our Together Again Summer Fellowship Unity. We meet every week, but this is one of the particular weeks with uh, organized activities and, um, and opportunities to be engaged with one another. So do come to be a part of that time following the service today. Looking ahead, this uh, next week, uh, beginning next Sunday on July the 24th, we'll be hosting the Families with Family Promise. Uh, we are still looking for some additional uh, folks to volunteer to help with that and to speak with Danny Vaughn or with Jennifer Brindisi to sign up. Uh, coming Saturday, we will have a memorial service for uh, Lois Edwards. Lois died uh, right in the midst of the early days of the pandemic. So it's been two years, and, and her family is now going to have a public service. I want to invite everyone to come and to be a part of that um, memorial service for her, followed by a reception. So that'll be Saturday at 2 o'clock, and I do invite you to come to be a part of that time together. Also looking ahead a little, mark your calendars for our next Taze worship service at 5 o'clock in the evening in the Historic Sanctuary on Sunday, July the 31st. That'll be followed by the Uni Union Unity Family Fun Night, which will be out on the front lawn beginning at 5.30, also on that day. And then the annual meeting of the congregation will be held on Sunday, August the 7th at 10 a.m., so in between our worship services. My friends, God is doing amazing and wonderful things, and we are gathered together this morning to worship God. So let us stand and join our voices as we begin to worship God together today.
those join in our call to worship. We are like a green olive tree in the house of God. We trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. Thank the Lord because of what God has done for us. In the presence of the faithful, we will proclaim God's name for it is good. Together, let us worship the living God. Each time we gather here to worship together, we have the opportunity to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God that we do not always live as we are called. And we are able to do this because we trust that God is merciful and just and eager to offer us grace and love. Therefore, let us make our confession together, first out loud and then silently. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we confess that we are broken, sinful creatures. You made us in your image, but we tarnish your good name. You call us your beloved children, but we take your favor for granted. 
We say that we want peace and yet continue to divide and distort. Forgive us, God of grace. Tear open the heavens and come down. Pour out your spirit of mercy upon us so that we may live in a way that is pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. By his body and his cross, Jesus reconciles all who were once estranged. Hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. First reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verses 6 through 12. At the end of the 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters have had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening, and there, in its beak, was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this point, let me invite our young friends, the children, to come and spend a few moments together with me here on the steps and the carpet. If you are joining us from home, I hope the children are near to the screen so you might have a chance to be a part of this special time as well. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. It is good to see you this morning. It's good to see you. I hope that you are well. It is always a gift to have you come and be a part of worship together. So thank you so much for being here. It's a better day when you are here with us. So the scripture that we just heard was about, uh, about Noah and his family, and they are all floating with all of the animals, animals in the ark. And guess what they were doing while they were floating there in the ark? They were just kind of waiting, right? Kind of waiting. Do, do you guys like to wait? 
No, I know, not really, huh? Like, if you know that it's going to be time to maybe go on vacation in a couple days, but you've got to wait because it's not time to go yet, that's kind of hard, right? Yeah. How about, um, do you like to wait in line at the grocery store while your mom and dad are getting all the groceries uh, paid for and everything like that? Is that a fun thing to do? No, not really. No, no. How about after dinner? Have you ever had to wait before you could eat dessert? Yeah, that's not very fun either, is it? No, no. Waiting's not any fun, is it? No, it's hard to wait. Oh, okay. All right. That's right. Sometimes we've got to finish our dinners first. That's right. Sometimes we get dessert first. You just never know. So, yeah, that's right. So, um, so I was thinking that about how, no, even though it's really hard to wait, right, one of the things that can help is to remember that good things are coming, right? Good things are coming. So Noah and his family and all the animals, they're waiting right on the ark. And then Noah decides that he is going to send out the dove. And so he sends out the dove the first time and the dove flies around and comes back. But the waters are still there. So they've got to wait even longer, right? Seven days later, Noah sends the dove out again. And this time, what happens? The dove comes back with a freshly plucked olive fruit. That's right. That's right. And so even though they had the olive branch, they knew the olive leaf, they knew that the waters were receding, but it still wasn't quite time to leave the ark yet. So they had to wait some more, but they knew that the good things that God intended with the ark and the waters were all receding, that that was coming to an end. So hope was on the way, right? And because we hope and we know that God's going to keep God's promises, it helps us as we wait. And so that last time when Noah sends the dove out, the dove doesn't come back because then Noah knew that it was safe for them to leave the ark. That's true. Yep, yeah, but the promises that God makes for us, we know are always going to come, right? So let's, let's remember that this week. Even in those times we have to wait, we can know, we can hope that God has good things that are still coming for us, okay? Okay, well, let's pray together then, all right? I'll pray a little bit, and you can repeat after me, okay? Dear God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and for doves. Help us when we have to wait to know that you will always keep your promises. Amen. All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming up today. If you are headed off to nursery, you can head out there with Ms. Kendra and Ms. Meredith. And otherwise, you can head on back to your seats as we surround you with our song of blessing.
For the months of June and July, we are exploring together the Holy Spirit in the series we're calling Empowered by the Spirit. And each week, we encounter the Spirit through a different biblical image. And today, we find the Spirit and Dove. Throughout the scriptures, we find references to doves or turtle doves. They were an especially important part of the sacrificial system in the Jerusalem temple. We heard in our first reading the Genesis account of Noah sending forth the dove from the ark to determine if the waters of the flood had started to recede. However, perhaps the most explicit reference of the Holy Spirit and the dove is the one we find in the accounts of Jesus' baptism. So for our second reading, let us hear God's word to us today, this time from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray as we sing together. tell you something in just a minute that you might not be able to forget. And it might forever change your understanding of the scripture text that I just read for you. Now I recognize that's a pretty big claim and this might not be something you particularly want to know. So if you decide to put your fingers in your ears for a few minutes, I will completely understand. As I was studying and reading for the sermon this week, I came across a book called Consider the Birds by Pastor Debbie Blue with a chapter about doves in the Bible. And this is where you might want to cover your ears because I read, it is not difficult information to uncover. Nevertheless, I was surprised to find that a dove is, in fact, a pigeon by another name. Pigeon is from the French pigeon, and dove is an English word. There are a great variety of birds English speakers call either pigeons or doves, but the names are interchangeable. She says this information can be hard to absorb. Yes, that information can be hard to absorb. The Holy Spirit is like a pigeon. That is going to take some getting used to. A pigeon descending upon Jesus at his baptism. As I said, this may forever change how we understand this text. And that actually may be a good thing. Because at least for me, this new image forces us to dig a little deeper here. 
Yes, there's a lot more going on in this text than a little water, an affirmative voice, and a cute bird landing on Jesus' shoulder. Brian Blunt, president of Union Presbyterian Seminary, suggests that he experienced something like what is going on in this text after the birth of his daughter. Those of you who are parents might know what he's talking about. After the birth of a child, uh, everything changes. Your schedule, your habits, how you talk, even the food you eat changes to fit the desires and schedules of this little person who now resides in your home. Dr. Blunt writes, it came to me clearly one fateful and instructive December night. There I was, a 38-year-old professor at the prestigious Princeton Theological Seminary. I stand and lecture before hundreds of students. I stand and preach before great congregations. And there I was, crawling on my hands and knees across the carpet of her bedroom floor like a scared rabbit in a futile attempt to escape. Before she opened her eyes, she found me out and sounded her personal piercing cry of alarm. He says we couldn't domesticate her. We couldn't get her to sleep when we wanted. We couldn't get her to eat like we wanted. A mind-bending, life-altering, change-your-ways kind of force had gotten loose and was running amok in our lives. My friends, that's what Jesus' baptism is like, especially here in the Gospel of Mark. This is no drops of water running down a cute infant's nose. This is no quiet, gentle breeze experience of the Holy Spirit. This is no sweet, cooing dove. As Jesus is coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart first image we find is not a gentle parting of the clouds like a curtain being raised on opening night in a theater or a play. No, the Greek word that Mark uses here is schizo. It means to tear, to rip, to shred. It's the root of our English word schism and is a violent image. And what is it that's being ripped or torn apart? It's the heavens. In ancient Israelite cosmology, the heavens were not some place in the clouds where God lived and where angels sat around playing harps. No, the heavens were a dome above the earth, a buffer, we might even say, created by God to separate the waters above the earth from the waters below the earth. Back in Genesis, when God decides to flood the earth because the wickedness of humans was great in the earth and every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually, when God says we've got to clean the house here, God opens the windows in the heavens to let the waters of chaos return. It's not an accident we're thinking about both the flood and Jesus' baptism this morning. Because the last time God opened the heavens, the waters turned with a vengeance. The waters and the world returned to its pre-creation state so that God could begin again. Yes, to tear open the heavens is to disrupt the very fabric of creation, to shatter an essential piece of the cosmic framework that allows life to exist, to fundamentally alter the relationship between God and God's creatures. The heavens keep creation safe. But now, as Jesus is coming up out of the water, he sees the heavens torn apart. But what descends this time? It's not the waters of chaos. No, God comes down. Jesus sees the Spirit descending like a dove, like a pigeon, 
upon him. The very presence of God emerges from the heavens. That sounds great to us, right? Because we love it when God is in our hearts, when God walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own. But first three Israelites would not have regarded this as good news. For God is too holy, too bright, too powerful to be present in this world. The buffer of heaven not only keeps the waters of chaos at bay, it also protects us because no one can look upon God and live With the heavens torn open and God coming down, the very creation is now at risk. As the prophet Isaiah once prayed, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil. That's what happens when God comes down. Tearing open the heavens, earthquakes, wildfires. Yes, the Israelites would not have appreciated this idea at all. In fact, they probably would have recognized a warning on a highway billboard I once saw signed God that said, Don't make me come down there. My friends, everything is going to change when God comes down. So this spirit that descends is more like a tiger unleashed from its cage than a sweet cooing dove. As Brian Blunt writes, the scholar debate that focuses on whether the dove imagery is supposed to demonstrate the bodily form of the spirit, like a bird, or whether it is to suggest the manner in which the dove descends, like a bird, misses the point. Who cares? Mark is less concerned about what it looks like and how it glides than he is about what does. It infiltrates Jesus. It possesses him. Yes, that's something else we learn. We dig a little deeper into this text. When talking about what the Spirit does to Jesus, Mark doesn't use the preposition epi, which means pawn. No, here Mark uses ace to intentionally say that the Spirit enters into Jesus. Jesus is possessed by God's Spirit. As he comes up out of the water, Jesus sees the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a pigeon into him. Yes, the Spirit descends like a pigeon or a dove. Messengers, birds were used as messengers in the ancient world to carry news, maybe news of hope, maybe even gospel good news across great distances, maybe even from heaven to earth. The Spirit sends like a pin, like a dove, birds that always seem to flock together, right? The Spirit descends like a pigeon or a dove, birds that even today are found everywhere, in urban settings, in rural settings. The Spirit descends like a pigeon or a dove, birds that are persistent and always unfoot, birds that can really make a mess out of our ordered spaces and lives. Pastor Debbie Blue writes, pigeons want to stay close to us. They are where we are in some of the worst places we have made, our neglected projects and abandoned buildings, and some of the best art museums, parks and roams, piazzas, They won't leave us alone. That's the kind of spirit, the very presence of God that possesses Jesus. The kind of spirit that's not going to leave the world alone. The kind of spirit that's going to address the great 
wickedness of humans in earth and the evil inclinations of their hearts, not with fire and brimstone and flood. No, my friends, this spirit is going to bring peace, not by singing kumbaya around a campfire, but a flood of love that confronts the powers and principalities of this world on a cross. Creating peace by giving his life for you and for me. This is the Spirit of God that does not light gently on Jesus' shoulder. This is the Spirit that possesses Jesus. Remember, his family is going to think that he is crazy. It's the beginning of a new creation. God is here with us. And nothing, nothing on earth or in heaven will ever be the same. My friends, the heavens have been torn open. God has come down. The Spirit is unleashed in this world, and not just in Jesus, but in you and in me, in this church, in this community. Something new and life-changing is here. And so I leave you this morning with words from the writer Annie Dillard who said, Why do people in church seem like cheerful, brainless tourists on a packaged tour of the absolute? Does anyone have the foggiest idea of what kind of power we so blithely invoke? Or, as I suspect, does no one believe a word of it? The church are children playing on the floor with their chemistry sets, mixing up a batch of TNT to kill a Sunday morning. She says it's madness to ladies' straw hats and velvet hats to church. We should all be wearing crash helmets. Ushers should issue life preservers and signal flares. They should lash us to our pews. For the sleeping God may wake someday and take offense. Or the waking God may draw us out to where we can never return. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, tear, tear open the heavens and come down. Bring new life, new creation. Your spirit with its persistence, even to mess up our ordered regular days. so that we might be more faithful to you and this new thing that you create in our midst. Help us to be a part, O oh Lord. Fill us with your spirit this day. Pray these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. My friends, in response to hearing Scripture read and proclaimed, let us stand and together affirm what it is that we believe. Today we use words from the Nicene Creed as they are printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, all that we are and all that we have amounts to nothing. Nothing without the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because the grace of Christ has been poured out so abundantly in our lives, let us respond to that great grace. Let us respond to God by the giving of our tithes and offerings of our hearts and of our hands. We ask you to prayerfully consider a financial contribution to undergird the transformative ministries that take place here at Unity Presbyterian Church and beyond these walls. There are many options for your giving. You can give online. You can mail your gift to the church. You can leave it in the box out in front of the historic sanctuary, or you may leave your gifts in the offering plates that you'll find at the exits this morning. As we have so freely received, let us also freely give. The psalmist calls us to pour out our hearts before God, for he is our sure refuge and strength. And so let us now enter into a time of prayers of the people. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, when Jesus came up out of the waters of baptism, the sky was lit up with the voice of the Father. And you, you descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. You descended not as an eagle, powerful and regal, not as a hawk, keen-eyed and quick, not as a sparrow fling to and fro, but as a dove. You descended on Christ as a meat bird, the sort of bird that the poorest of the poor could afford to sacrifice. You descended with wings full of peace and full of hope too like the dove that returned to Nor after six straight weeks of relenting rain with a sprig of olive in her beak, extending the hope of life once again. When you descended on Jesus at his baptism full of meekness and innocence, you anointed him for ministry, not of royal power or military might, but of humility hope, purity, and peace. And so we ask this day that you would anoint us with these same gifts, Holy Spirit, and send us out wise as serpents and innocent as doves, preparing the way for hope and for peace. Jesus, Lord of all life, who came among us that we might have life and have it so abundantly, through the Holy Spirit, continue your ministry of peace and hope and healing. Hear us this day as we name in our hearts 
those of our family and friends who most need your healing touch. Deliver those who are captive to addictions of mind or body. Save those who are trapped in destructive and abusive relationships. Send us out as your disciples to those who are lonely, who are broken, and who are afraid. Hear us now as we continue to pray with one voice the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. My friends, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. As we go forth from this place, hear these last words from the hymn we just sang. Come, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all thy quickening powers, come shed abroad a Savior's love that shall kindle ours. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.